time for the Mike Wagner Show. Powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show brings you famous celebrities and amazing people from all over the world. Listen online at themikewagnershow.com and on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. And watch the interview on YouTube. So sit back and relax and enjoy the Mike Wagner Show. Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today at 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on the themikewagnershow.com. You can check our Facebook page at facebook.com slash the Mike Wagner Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, iTunes, Google, and Apple Play. And also subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on YouTube and take the Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device. We're here with a wonderful lady who uh, used to work in the uh, Washington, D.C. area. She's a retired Air Force colonel with 30 years of service, author of Right to Influence, multi-award winning um, book, public speaker, consultant for the federal government, and um, taught writing to uh, professionals and um, you know, uh, wrote products for the federal government. And um, she also holds uh, public and private presentations. And uh, her book is fantastic. So if you're looking to write better, this is a lady to talk to. So live from, live from the beautiful area, where she's at, and she'll make you learn to write better and make you more motivated. Ladies and gentlemen, the queen of writing, Carla Bass. Carla, good morning, good afternoon, Amy. Thanks for joining us today. <laughs> Thank you. I've been called lots of things, but never the queen of writing. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and powerful writing does change lives, and uh, you have to agree with that. And uh, you've been a retired Air Force colonel for with 30 years of service, author of Right to Influence, multi-war winner, and working on a second edition. You're a public speaker and consultant for the federal government. You hold uh, workshops, public and private presentations, and just teaching uh, everybody how to write better, including uh, you've taught ambassadors, you've taught um, you know higher-ups, uh, colonels, and uh, everything else in the federal government. And before we get into all that, uh, tell us how I got started. Sure. Actually, um, I'm going to take you back to when my father, who was an Air Force colonel, commissioned me. He gave me three pieces of advice to this young second lieutenant. He said, first, um, stay focused on the mission. Don't get caught up in office politics. Second, he said, always keep your sense of humor. And third, he said, always, always take care of your people and they will take care of you. So, you know, with all of that in mind, as a lieutenant colonel, I uh, commanded a squadron of 480 wonderful young people in Hawaii. At that point, it was the most losing unit in the statewide quarterly and professional awards, not because these kids didn't deserve it, but because the supervisors above them could not write winning nomination packages. So because you're couldn't write well, you didn't get the accelerated promotions or the pay raises that hurts you sending your kids to college. And so all of these horrible ripple effects because people couldn't write well. So I took three days vacation. I sequestered myself in a cabin analyzed Miting, developed a little tiny handbook, taught my guys how to write, and we started sweeping the awards. That's nice. where I realized that powerful writing changes lives. Then the other units in the island, they came and asked if I would teach them also, and of course I did. But what shocked the heck out of me was that the, the vacuous need. I ended up, wherever I went in subsequent assignments, I ended up teaching my word sculpting, is what I called it then, word sculpting techniques to thousands of people for the next 15 years and that was before Facebook and Twitter and, and all of the social media. And, uh, and so we, we need to know those writing methodologies more now than we did ever before. That is amazing, too. And, of course, um, of course, with your writing skills and everything, did you teach yourself um, how, how to write very efficiently? Or um, we, we, like, you know, had these gifts and everything? Or was it just like, you know, you just had this, you know, just natural interest in writing or you just had to um, work your way up? 
Um, part of it, part of it is hereditary. My my father was an Air Force Colonel, and and you know years later, generals would come up to me after he had passed and and explain that I had no idea how many careers he furthered because he was able to help manipulate and bring stories out. My mother herself was a two time published author, so part of it's hereditary. Mm. Um, when when I was a second lieutenant, I was the uh, the I wrote daily briefings for the director of the National Security Agency. So for my entire thirty year career, from the very 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 beginning, I was put in a position where you're writing for general officers. You have one page or X number of seconds, and you simply have to make each word count. So between heredity and and the job requiring that of me that's how i developed the skill set mm-hmm. that, that was amazing too and of course um you had some really interesting assignments what do you consider the most uh, fulfilling assignment you had the one in hawaii uh, and it's only because that that, that was such a life changer for me because I was able to propel the careers of so many people. That that was a pivotal assignment. I, I had no idea really before then the the how written word on on people's lives, whether it's going for career opportunities or grants or scholarships or fellowships or or being able to take your business to a, a whole different level. I I just wasn't aware of that. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that the the next one, the next fascinating job would have been Bulgaria. Oh, Bulgaria! That's interesting. And um, you know, you know, let's talk about uh, Bulgaria. Sounds like an interesting country. Uh, fascinating. It's the size of I think they said the size of Tennessee, but the the culture goes back six thousand years. I was assigned to the embassy there, and that was that was just um, a, a wonderful assignment. Mm-hmm. And, and of course, uh, you also had some fascinating assignments as well, too. And uh, let's talk about that. Well, those, those are the biggies. I mean, uh, I was group commander uh, at National Security Agency. I had 2,800 folks for whom I was responsible. And, of course, there, there's a lot of, of awards and, and performance reports. I, I developed a lot of classes um, uh, professional development classes for the senior NCOs, for the airmen, and of course, wherever I went, I taught the word sculpting and, and the, the writing methodologies. Mm-hmm. That's amazing, too. And uh, let's talk about your uh, book in just a minute here, Right to Influence. You listen to The Mike Wagner Show at themikewagnershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs at below the competition way. Call today at 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show, get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on the themikewagnershow.com. You can check our Facebook page at facebook.com slash the Mike Wagner Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, iTunes, Google, and Apple Play. Also, watch the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel and take the Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device. We're here with author Carla Bass. She's a retired Air Force colonel with 30 years of service. She's the author of Right to Influence, who's won numerous awards. And um, let's talk about some of the awards you won, too. And um, also, you have uh, the second edition of the book out. Sounds fascinating. Oh, very much. Uh, uh, I, I premiered the second edition. It actually d- debuted at the, uh, the American Library Association's annual convention here in D.C. in uh, the end of June. So it, it's off and running. I'm so excited about the second edition. So what's different between the first and second? Um, when the first edition came out, I immediately began teaching uh, the workshops for government agencies, for corporate clients, for uh, private individuals. I teach at libraries, just uh, in NGOs. Uh, and all of the material that I developed for those various workshops over the intervening two years, I took all that material and, and incorporated it into the second edition. So now there's a, there are brand new chapters in there. And here's how you write an elevator speech. Here's how you write the essay for college applications. There's one on uh, on writing submissions for grants, so it's basically taking all of the, the the writing techniques and strategies and methodologies and applying them to those very specific products. 
Hmm. That was uh, that was amazing too. And uh, what are some of the chapters in the first book? Um, that that's like highly essential. You talked about the grants. You talked about um, you know, like with um the elevator speeches and everything else. You know, you know, maybe some tips in there, like say um, you know, how to get a job or how to uh, get into school or even say um, I'm just trying to think of some of the other letters. You know, just a simple business letter and um, sales and everything else. So maybe just hit upon some of the chapters and what are some of the uh, tips that's recommended, especially the most common ones. The, sure. The uh, the chapters that I just mentioned are additive to the or in addition to the the chapters that were in the first book. So we, there's also pair of, uh, chapters in there on on resumes, on writing brief things. Um, oh, what else? Uh, just off the top, <laughs> top of my head, I can't think of anything else. But, but mm-hmm. the, the tips I explain to people that each, each, no matter what you're writing, every single author, whether it's an email or a resume or or input for your own per, your performance appraisal, you're constrained by time and space. Tick tick, the reader is busy, so you have to be able to get your message across as quickly as possible. And then space, very often you're limited to space, physical space, whether it's a, the the top part of a web page or tell me what what you want to say in in 300 words or if there's a government form, sometimes the 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 space is actually marked out on the government Form. So you have to know how to make every single space count. So some of the strategies, I, I, I teach people to, to think in terms of an inverted triangle. First, you have to develop the strategy of your message. That's the, the top large part of the triangle. And after you've got the draft, this is where you apply the word sculpting techniques, which is part two of the second edition, um, where you hone your draft and that's where you make every single word count. But some of the strategies, again, bearing in mind that time and space are limited, the first strategy is prioritize your message. If you have 30 seconds of the reader or the listener's time, what's the most important thing you want to get across first? So you list those out, and and I advise everybody outline, because... As every off is you're a tour guide, you're taking your reader on a journey. So you know the beginning of the message and you know the destination that you want to lead them, where you want to lead them, and then you outline the steps in between. That that outline process helps you helps you hone the message and helps you make sure you don't uh, lose any uh, any key points. Mm-hmm. And then another another thing um, people sometimes do is they, they accidentally bury the golden nugget. People think that they have to build so much uh, uh, preliminary information, kind of make the case before they get to the main point that by the time you by time you share the main point, you've already lost the reader. So that's where it got, I, I mentioned get the main points up front first. Mm-hmm. So, so basically in terms of bearing the golden nugget and um – you, you, you talked about that. So so basically, do you just lay out the gold nugget uh, up front in the message or you just um, just want to emphasize you just dra- drag it out or just um, d- or just simply lay it on the line? So we just want to make sure um, bearing the gold nugget is a good thing. Get out there right away. Well, it, sometimes it depends on the product, but uh, basically you, you put the gold nuggets up front. Again, if, if you only got X number of, of minutes for the reader or the audience, uh, you, you need to get that message up front before you lose their attention. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, go ahead. Keep going on. You're doing good. <laughs> All right. Um, some of the uh, now, once you've got the once you've got the main draft, that's where you bring out these word sculpting techniques, and and uh, some of those are uh, useless words. Get rid of the useless words. Then there are other examples. Of, the second word sculpting tool is don't use words that hog space. So I've, I can give you some examples of of uh, where you can you take three or four words and you're able to condense them into one. Uh, verbs are your friends. This one I, I I love teaching. This one. Imagine a hard boiled egg. You got that? A hard boiled egg. Mm-hmm. And concentrate now. Envision the yolk. The yolk is the verb. The white stuff surrounding it is the bureaucratic blather that very often in corporate and, and business and government writing, we bury the verbs in, in unnecessary words, such, uh, such as uh, arrive at a solution to a problem. Well, you just resolve the problem. You don't have to arrive at a solution. 
solution to it or uh, provide answers. Don't provide answers, just answer. Um, need to have a discussion with. We need to discuss. So those are just a couple of, of tips on how you go from fat riding down to skinny riding. Mm, amazing, too. I'm glad you wrote that up and um, are brought to our attention. And what are some of the other beer crack phrases that you see very often? Oh, on a national basis, on a daily basis, on a monthly basis, that is all. Just listen to any of the major newscasters. You'll hear that. And instead of saying on a monthly basis, just say monthly on a daily basis, daily. So there's all sorts of ways you can you can trim this excess verbiage. And that's so important when you get back to that time and space matters. Um, and another one, now this falls in the useless words category, provide with. And it doesn't sound so very important, but if you're into the uh, a writing situation where literally everything single space counts the word with is completely extraneous i provide you the opportunity you provide me the platform to address your readers you don't have to provide with so again it's a nuance but those little nuances truly add up and make a big difference Mm -hmm. so it's learning how to wield it Mm -hmm. and and also too what do you think about um you know the current administration as well too you think there's a lot of uh, bureaucratic um you know, waste when it comes to phrases and everything, or do you think it has uh, has trimmed down the uh, current administration? I'm sorry, ask that again. Oh, okay. Uh, you, you talked about you worked with um, the federal government, you worked products and everything else. So, so that's what I ask is too, like with um, today's um, you know federal government, do you think there's a lot of uh, bureaucratic phrases out there, or do you think they've uh, eliminated, it or are they currently working on it right now? Oh, no. The bureaucratic blather, as I put it, it's been around for, for a very, very long time. It's, mm-hmm. if, anything, it's, if anything, it's gotten worse. You know, when, when you and I were in school, um, I think the education system was, was quite good at, at teaching grammar and writing and so forth. And I think our academic system, no dings on the teachers. They are, they are heroes and heroines. But I think our academic structure has, has, uh, has um, backed off from imparting that kind of knowledge. So when kids come out of, even out of grad school, they're still writing fat. And, uh, and, and that handicaps them because the employers nowadays, I mean, in Everybody, once you're in this environment, you have to make those words count. Seconds matter. And, uh, and, and students, you know, they're given the, uh, the assignment, write a 5,000-word paper, and the instinctive response is a little bit of meat, a lot of fat, and I can make that mark, except that's teaching them exactly the wrong habit. And so they don't know how to write with focus and precision when they graduate, and, and that hurts them, too. Um, when it comes time to submitting input for your personal appraisal, people don't like doing that. It's not very pleasant, but you're given X number of spaces or X number of words. You have to know how to identify and convey as much information about what you did and get the credit for it as possible in that space. But if you don't know how to add the details to make the story sing, or if you fill that valuable space with so many useless words, you're truly hurting your. Mm-hmm. And, and he also that talked about that I learned back. At the- mm-hmm. And he also talked about the resumes as well too. What are some of the uh, the the killer words that pretty much kill a resume? Like with the um the enemy fat fillers and uh, everything else. It's uh, in other words, what words should be cut out of a resume? Uh, well, it's it's uh, the the resume. Um, the the biggest thing I see in resumes is the verbs, uh, bullets. If if you're starting if you're starting bullet statements, and in particular with resumes, they all should start with verbs. They all should begin with the same tense verbs, and they should all be powerful verbs. So I'm going to read to you this, these these bullets uh, came from one particular resume, and listen to how it snags. This is how not to do it. Uh, co-lead subject matter, responsible for, solely responsible for, provide coordination, responsible for, 
coordinates, uh, supports, provides analysis, uh, provided support, responsible for. When you've got a resume that just bullet after bullet after bullet, like I just read, the, the, the reader, you've lost the reader because those bullets convey nothing about what you've done. Uh, um, instead, it would be developed, implemented, initiated, led, uh, hard-hitting, concrete, action-oriented bullet, bullets that explain exactly what you did do. Mm-hmm. And then and then add details, because details make a story pop as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, supervised a team that studied a project uh, and made recommendations to the CEO. Okay, that, that's good. Supervised a nine-person team on a six-week study that made eight recommendations to the CEO. All recommendations were accepted, saved the company the company eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars that's that's another thing i i foot stomp in the book is is look at what you've written and then add those details because they provide the reader the it's a mental yardstick to understand truly what's the significance of what you accomplished and and sometimes folks don't know to do that Mm -hmm. and 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 it's important as well too to know with the uh, job market out there for college graduates and it's a good book for the college graduates and also i also grew up where it's like we did a lot of essays especially on the three-point thesis and of course maybe you can just uh, tell everybody what the three-point thesis is what the three-point uh, thesis is <laughs> you you tell me i did i did a lot of writing we did a lot of sentence diagramming. <laughs> that's that, how i that, learned how to make the words make the words sing mm-hmm. yeah and, and that's also something group as well too there are people out there that don't know how to use it so that's something emphasized as well and i have to say this that um you know the three-point is uh very very important as well too so we'll talk more about the book as well too you listen to the mike wagner show at the mike wagner show.com powered by sonic web studios Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today at 1 800 303 3960. That's 1 800 303 3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on the MikeWagnerShow.com. You can check our Facebook page at Facebook.com slash the Mike Wagner Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, and also take the Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device and watch the interview on YouTube as well on the Mike Wagner Show. We're here with author Carla Bass, retired Air Force Colonel, 30 years of service, author of Right to Influence, a multi-award winner, and, um, you know, just a little more about the book. And uh, again, just tell everybody... How can they purchase a book? Uh, the book is available online at Amazon or Barnes and Nobles or other um, online outlets. Uh, it's it's available in paperback and ebook format. Also, uh, lots of information about the book and myself and the workshops at www.writetoinfluence.net. Mm-hmm. And it's you know I, I love I love this thing. People people uh, stop me in the hallways and they say, Colonel Bass, if it hadn't been for I wouldn't have been able to. So so this stuff really does change lives and and it's mm-hmm. also lifeblood for effective operation, effective businesses as well. Mm-hmm. That is amazing as well too. And of course you also hold uh, workshops as well too. And if you um and and if you're on tour and everything, when when your next uh. When's your next uh, workshops? If you travel throughout the U.S. <laughs> well, I'm uh, I'm teaching a two-day workshop in Chicago uh, for a corporate client in the end of the see the end of October, July. I was on the road a, a great deal. I, I I support the U.S. Geological Survey, and I, I gave two workshops, two full-day workshops for them, and then New York also. I was in New York City for giving a two-day workshop there. I do a lot of one-hour workshops locally so I'm, I'm pretty and all of this is on my, my personal time I still work for the federal government so everything I do with right to influence is truly a labor of love and it's all on my vacation time and, and I, I don't begrudge that at all mm-hmm. and that's amazing as well too and um, and of course we talk about writing and um, you know how to influence who do you consider your favorite writers and authors Daniel Silva 
with and not that I have a whole lot of time to read, but he's in the uh, the spy the spy genre, and uh, and and that man can cram so much uh, feeling, so much meaning into a single sentence. And I, I paraphrase this, so I, I apologize to Daniel, but um, the the doorbell rang with the urgency of an angry infant. I mean, just just think about the sound that an angry infant, I mean, just four or five words. It's like, oh, my God, that's so good. So I, I appreciate who can infuse so much meaning into so few. So Daniel Silva is my hero in the fictional world. And, but when that raises another point, is this right to influence stuff, although the applications are, are heavily weighted towards nonfiction, towards business, towards resumes and grants and all those things we've mentioned, it's also applicable for the world of fiction. I just had an article published um, uh, on an online magazine, and it's, it's a fact of fiction, turn you know, pump, a pumpkin into a carriage. Nobody likes to read swimming pool books. A swimming pool book to me is if you take a paperback and you're floating around in the pool and you fall in, it's no big deal because you read two or three sentences on on a page and you get the idea. You just kind of keep skimming through. Even, you know, fiction authors, the idea is to write it so that the reader hangs on every single word and you don't want to go by a single paragraph because it's so rich in meaning. That's Daniel Silva. Wow. I, I never heard of the guy. I have to check out his books. That is so amazing. Wow. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's I have to go buy the book as well, too. <laughs> and, and, of course, you know, just a couple of things here. Who do you consider your biggest influence in your career besides your dad? John Wayne. John Wayne. All How right. so? When, when I, I was... John Wayne. Yeah. Well, I I grew up in a very patriotic family. Uh, my dad was Air Force Intelligence for the, for the last half of his career, and and John Wayne, my father, and and Bob Hope. The, they were they were the cocoon in which I was raised. I was raised to to love the country and and want to serve her. So, my father and John Wayne. You watch the John Wayne movies. He stood for integrity. He stood for courage. He stood for family. He stood for country. And so, John Wayne and, and my dad. Nice. And what's your favorite John Wayne movie? Oh, I like them all. I think uh, from a comedic perspective, either Donovan Three from or McClintock. Hmm. Interesting. I like I like to regret myself. I remember watching that as one of the first movies I saw in uh, Drive In. I guess that's one of the popular ones. I enjoyed True Grit a lot. That had to be my favorite. Yeah, that, that was a good one as well. Definitely a good one too. <laughs> that's great. And what's so, the best of? Wait, go go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say my my proudest possession, and this is uh, if, if there's a tornado coming, I told my kids grab this and run for the basement. Um, I, I wrote him a letter. Unfortunately, he was dying and nobody knew it. But when I was in Germany, I wrote I wrote a letter and, and it reached him. I, and I, I asked in this letter, I said, all I want to do is shake your hand. I will take personal leave. I'll fly from Germany just five minutes of your time. Um, what I received in response, though, from his personal secretary was, was a, signed, a signed photograph. Dear Carla, good luck, John Wayne. So I've, I've got that framed and hanging behind a flag downstairs in my family room here. And I told the kids that if ever there's a tornado or something, grab that photograph, head for the basement, because everything else in the house, the insurance will cover. But not that, dear Carla. Good luck, John Wayne photo. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It makes me want to get a hold of a John Wayne. That's great. <laughs> and what's the yeah. best advice you can give to anybody at this point? Um. Get the book, but not not because I'm trying to sell the books. It's because if if you can learn how to leverage words to your own advantage, it opens doors to opportunity for a lifetime. So whether you're the private business owner trying to further your business or the high school kid trying to to trying to uh, to write that first resume from from soup to nuts. This it, this is life changing stuff. It's a life skill, and uh, and that that's it. It's learn how to write powerfully. It, mm-hmm. it, it opens doors. 
Yes, and powerful writing does change lives, and it can yours change too. And uh, Carla just wants to say a big thank you for your time. You've been fantastic, and and I'm ready to get out there and write as well too. Purchase a book, and uh, once again, what's your upcoming projects? What's your website? How do people contact you, and where can they purchase a book? Okay, thank you. The the book is on Amazon and Barnes and Nobles uh, and, and several other outlets. It's in paperback and ebook. The second edition, I emphasize the second edition because that's got so much additional information. So check out the second edition. Um, the website is www.writetoinfluence.net. You can email me at Carla C A R L A at Right to influence.net. Um, I teach workshops that go anywhere from one hour to two full days for corporate, for academic, for private business, for NGOs. Uh, and I, this is this is a calling. I mean, the the comments I get from everybody, it's the wind behind my sails. This this is what I this is what I love to do now is help others help themselves. That is amazing. Carl, just want to say a big thank you for your time. You've been fantastic. I learned a lot from you. And please do everybody a favor. Keep us up to date. Look forward to having you on back again soon. Thank you very, very much. Thanks for listening to The Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Listen online at themikewagnershow.com and on Facebook, SoundClub, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. And watch the interview on YouTube. Also, become a sponsor of the program and or donate today at themikewagnershow.com. Join us again tomorrow for another episode of The Mike Wagner Show.